Okay, hi there, and welcome to another in our series of macroeconomic essay plans. Uh, this one is on monetary policy. Here's the question. To what extent can a policy of higher interest rates lead to an improvement in macroeconomic performance? Discuss with reference to a country of your choice. So with these essays, again, we build essentially two main arguments. Uh, build the analysis, build the knowledge of the application, then evaluate each as you go and come to a conclusion at the end. My first point is going to be that interest rates can be justified in terms of controlling inflation. So higher monetary policy interest rates and monetary tightening, if you like, uh, might be justified on the grounds of helping to limit inflationary pressure, both demand pull and cost push. Good example, uh, the United States Federal Reserve has been increasing interest rates. They've raised uh, interest rates, I think, four times this year from 0.25% to 2.5%, partly because unemployment in the labour market is very low and there are, there are signs of an overheating economy. Well, if you start to raise interest rates, that helps to promote macro stability. It keeps the domestic economy competitive. It helps to limit the size of any positive output gap and low stable inflation is a way of keeping business uh, uncertainty to a minimum. So monetary policy can help to stabilize the cycle. In, in short, control the, the risk of demand pull, cost push inflation. However, a counter argument, a counter point, is that higher interest rates now might actually cause an inflow of hot money. Those short term capital flows looking for the best rate of return. Uh, that inflow of hot money could cause a currency appreciation. You could draw a diagram showing an increase in demand for a currency. That then makes some export sectors less price competitive, particularly exports where there's a high price elasticity of demand. That could cause a slowdown in the export sector, uh, both in terms of output, um, investment and jobs, as well as perhaps leading to a worsening of the net trade balance. Much depends on how open a country is to trade. So higher interest rates in a country where trade is really important, as a share of GDP, could be a, an offsetting factor to their macro performance. My second point, uh, saying that higher interest rates could improve macro performance, is to focus on the returns to people with savings, as well as and including retirees, people who have left the labour market. So an increase in nominal interest rates, improves returns for savers, many of whom, or millions of whom, have lost out in real terms in the decade, the 10 years since the global financial crisis. We've had this period of unprecedented low interest rates. The real return on saving has been negative for many, many people. Why does this help? Well, higher savings help uh, helps people to repay debt. Uh, debt we know is a high percentage of GDP in the UK. Higher savings can act as a buffer against future macroeconomic uncertainty. And if people are saving more, that increases the flow of deposits into commercial banks, which in theory creates more liquidity, more capital, if you like, for them to, to support bank lending, to maybe to finance investment. So if higher savings funds higher investment, that can increase long-run aggregate supply. So the case for incre increasing interest rates is to generate more income for savers and generate more deposits into the banking system. However, in evaluation is the phrase I'm using here. If there's no guarantee that commercial banks will lend out more if the returns to savers improve. Indeed, often if you think about interest rates going up more generally, uh, that's likely to lead to a contraction in bank lending because borrowing is more expensive, particularly for smaller businesses and especially for households who are dependent on expensive, unsecured credit. They will be the first to see a, an increase in the cost of their loans. Downside here is that if interest rates go up, that would cause the economy or an economy to slow down. So there's a trade-off there to make. Important in any 25 marker, your example will tell you how much they expect. Important to put a conclusion in to get your timing sufficiently well you do have time for a conclusion uh, and again it's important in a conclusion to say something something fresh don't just repeat point already made so my argument 
is as follows. The decision by a central bank such as the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England, nice to just name two central banks there, to start tightening monetary policy by increasing interest rates, those decisions are often finely balanced. In the UK, for example, growth last year was only 1.4%, slowest for five years. Inflation is under target. Yes, unemployment is very low, but there doesn't seem to be much macroeconomic justification for raising interest rates at the moment. However, the situation in the United States could well be different. Growth has been stronger, share prices have been going up, unemployment is very low now in the States, big rise in employment. And the argument here is that the ability of a central bank to smooth the inevitable fluctuations in, in GDP depends in part on having some room for adjustment, some, some latitude. So the United States might decide to increase interest rates now back towards 3% to give them the flexibility to cut interest rates and stimulate borrowing and investment if there is a recession. In that sense, higher interest rates today could give yourselves more uh, room for manoeuvre to improve your macro performance in the event of an, an inevitable downturn in the economy at some point in time. Always scope for a diagram. I mean, don't, don't be afraid to go back to year 12 macro. Use ADS analysis, but develop your diagram to get higher analysis marks. So this would be the classic diagram to draw if you wanted to show demand pull inflationary pressure, and therefore the argument for higher interest rates. And you'll get some credit for this kind of diagram. But I think better just to develop the diagram a little bit and say, well, if interest rates go up, so that should be AD3. Let me just change that. The beauty of the, the system here. Uh, if interest rates go up, AD3 would be a little lower than AD2. Yes, growth is slower. But on the other hand, you help to control some demand pull inflationary pressure. This diagram, corrected, this diagram is a more developed diagram and should get higher marks for your analysis. And that's what, that's what we're after, isn't it? We're after exam answers which do the job, nice and clear, uh, follow the structure, evaluate as you go, good use of evidence, an essay plan that will do the job. Thanks for joining in on this video.